these actors, and they, they have a lot of crazy things they say. <laughs> uh, it's funny, we get all this uh, elaborate catering for this photo shoot with Denzel, and he all did, he tells everybody all he wants to do is go get out, go out and get a couple of McDonald's. <laughs> so, you know, you, you never know what's going to have the talent when you're working. That's part of my job as an art director to, to help guide things. But anyway, back to the school days. Um, we shot them a lot, and then as you can see here, everybody's kind of, uh, the idea of this campaign was to make it kind of Disney-esque. When I shot this, this blue was never here, and this is before we had Photoshop. There was no Photoshop, no illustrator, none of that. So we actually did a, actually the photographer shot it. I went to Paris Photo Lab. We actually did a large version, stripped everybody. They were in position. This was actually done by uh, James a great uh, mur muralist in LA who drew this on the street. And then these people were drew it on the street as well. And then I want I didn't like the gray background that was on the background here, so I made it blue. And then we made these different colors in the actual Paris Photo Lab and changed it. The tag, I worked on the tagline a little bit. And um, you know, just a beautiful image. I love the color. I love Danny Aiello, how he looked. And, this girl and everything. Everything was styled. I my stylist would write in all the colors, made sure she had bright, colorful clothes. And this idea came from a sketch. I drew it. It was a in the, in the script. Spike kept cutting to all these scenes of kids riding on the street. So I thought, wow, that might be a really interesting image for the actual one sheet. And the purpose of a, a one sheet campaign is to capture one moment out of a 90-minute film that just captured you. That's really, really, that's so difficult. Because you got to pick. Do you pick the scene when, when Spike is walking down the street with the pizza? Do you pick the scene when he burns down the kid's pizzeria? Do you pick the scene when he throws the garbage can through the window? Do you pick the scene when, when Spike's uh, 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 when he to with, uh, a love and hate with Bill Nunn? Do you pick the scene? You don't, so those are all elements that have to be part of the presentation. Obviously, you want to sell Spike Lee because he's a star, and he's a star, but that's my process. That's my creative direction and how I create. So that's how, you know, that, that process. I don't know how to explain it other than you have to do multiple images to come there. Uh, More Better Blues um, campaign uh, was a follow-up to this fabulous film, and it was about jazz. And so I thought that, okay, cool. Let's come up with a cool idea. Uh, this was never in the movie. It didn't exist. But I said, a lot of jazz people in this movie were, you know, you enter into a jazz club in the back door. So I came with this idea of shooting in an alley. Uh, the thing, but the photographer who did it was Anthony Barboza, the same photographer that shot this, shot this. And I brought him back in. So I told Spike, hey, it'd be cool man, if we could put the do the right thing poster behind this image. And Spike said, that's really cool. And I, it was kind of like part one, part two, and Spike liked it. When I designed this logo, I wanted to have a jazz feel, and if you look at this logo, it kind of reminds a little bit of Blue Note Records. That was the purpose of having this kind of a style, when I just redesigned the letters that look like Blue Note Records. Here, this image here of Denzel was from a famous photographer shot this a long time ago uh, of, of, of jazz, and then we wanted to recreate it. So I brought Denzel in, and then we brought in uh, Jawa and the other actors here and put them into position. Then we shot that, and then we made a large block, and then we pasted it on top of here. The problem with this one is that when Denzel saw this, uh, this one was a revised version, because Spike was bigger here, and Denzel was smaller. And Denzel, Denzel called me and said, look, man, let me tell you what's happening. Uh, you're going to make me bigger. And Spike, you're, I, I know you're the director, but you're not the star of the right. film. It's funny. It's funny. It's funny. It's funny. It's funny. When I was making this, we had a, when I did this photo shoot, I had a bed in, in the shot. And uh, we were going to do this bed, and I was going to have Denzel in the middle between the two girls. So when, when, when Denzel walked into the set, he, Denzel said, what's the bed for? I said, oh, well, this is an idea, man. You're, you're going to be in the middle, and your wife's going to be here, and you're going to be here, and you're, gonna, you're not going to take off your clothes. You're just going to have one, you're just going to be on, on, under the cover, and you're going to have your trumpet, and you're going to be kind of blowing, you know, and then you have the two girls. And then Denzel said, wait, 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 wait a minute. Let me take you out. Let me talk to you. Come here. He says, I'm an actor. Do, do you know who Sidney Poitier is? I said, yeah, I know Sidney Poitier. I'm an actor. I'm not, 
I, I'm not going to do um, any kind of uh, uh, image that's going to make me look negative. So I won't do that. <laughs> you know, and I said, well, yes, sir. I, I, I won't I'll do that, Mr. Mr. Washington. But it was just funny how he, he was like very particular about, some actors are very particular about how you create their image and how they look and how they present it. And uh, so we ended up not doing it, but as you know, this was that was that he just did this. Next movie was Jungle Fever, and as you know, Jungle Fever was a story about interracial relationships and also about Sam Jackson, who had some drug issues that was happening during that period of time when it was a beautiful film. So I came up with this great idea of let's take interracial relationship and bond it together because uh, Wesley Snipes had a relationship with another uh, Caucasian lady and they wanted to show the mixture of it. So that's how we had the two hands. And when I did this, and this is actually Wesley's hand. And this is, uh, he came and came to the set and shot it. And then I brought it, we had another hand, and we just did this type treatment. And, uh, but I still wanted to keep the type treatment kind of like, uh, kind of uh, uh, distressed and kind of stressed a little bit. So I just want to keep it simple and strong. And I want a key item for so this one as well. This one, and I think one of, one of these two. And by the way, uh, as you see here, these are some of the images that we did for Do the Right Thing, as well as over here on Jungle Fever. You can see we do many, this is actually some of the images, that sketches that were part of the photo shoot that we put together. Because it was about Benson, Benson Hurst and, and Harlem and how they came together. So these are some of the, the drawings that were done so that people could get an understanding. But this is the process of how these campaigns are done and to make them successful and work. And it takes, it's a long process, but it's a beautiful process. But I try, like I said before, I try to keep it as an artistic form. I'm gonna switch over to the yeah, other side yeah. right now. And, oh, Do you need some markers? Oh yeah, thank you. Today, um, not met. Um, I, a lot of people think it's one of the. I think it, uh, I remember when I came up with Malcolm. I was, you know, I used to look at the Nike campaign. Nike used to do these amazing campaigns with Carl Lewis a long time ago. He would jump over uh, something, and you just see the image, no tight, no nothing. And I said to myself, we got to come up with a campaign that is no image, just a graphic. So Spike came up with a silver, I had a hat during that period. They had a silver X and a black hat. And we all started to like look at it. And uh, we would say, I mean, I said to Spike, that looks incredible, that's incredible. And so when I got with Joe Wayne at Warner Bros, I said, we got to come up with a campaign from Malcolm X. And here are like some of the sketches we did. I did Denzel. Standing with the people, some logotypes, uh, two hands crossed. These are all sketches that we were possibly going to do a photo shoot of, uh, and that's just part of that creative process on Malcolm X. So what happened is um, we were trying to decide what Malcolm do we sell. Uh, I saw this movie so many times. Do we do the young Malcolm? Do we do the uh, uh, old Malcolm? Do we do the, the angry Malcolm? Or do we, or we do with the other, the, uh, the Malcolm uh, before he passed away? And Denzel, so we all talked about it at the end of the day, and I did some, I don't have them here, but there were some, some sketches that we did, and at the end of the day, Denzel just said, look man, it's so complicated, I don't even know what Malcolm we do. Let's just do the X. <laughs> and so, at the end of the day, this was the end, we ended up, I, I came to the silver X, this was the actual campaign. There was no type, no name. This November 18th and the X, that's it, when the movie opened. And, uh, you know, people just they think it's like one of the better campaigns. It was ubiquitous, the X. It was everywhere. It was everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Exactly. And uh, so I'm not really happy with it. And I thought, it, I didn't know what else we needed to say. Because I thought X was the, 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 the definition of what Malcolm X was. And the, the silver and the black was just the, the perfect color tone. And I told Spike, look, man, let's just use this, the, the silver X from your cap. I mean, this is, this is it. I mean, we don't, I mean, with all due respect, 
you know, we can show Denzel. I did an image of Denzel, the Nation of Islam in the back. I did an image of Denzel with, uh, in the desert in, in, uh, in, uh, uh, when he went to, to, uh, over to uh, Mecca. Uh, Mecca. Uh, I did uh, another image. We did an image of the X on, made into the American flag on fire with Denzel in the front. And I remember, uh, I remember Joe Wayne and Warner Brothers saw that image and said, oh, Mark, that is so cool. He said, where do I take all my Jewish friends? They're going to die, man. They're going to see this. They're going to love this. He said, he said, wait a minute. He said, man, I don't, I don't think we can do this. I don't think we can do the American flag on fire with Denzel. And we take this move, we sell it to Mississippi. They're going to they gonna think we're part of the clan, man. He said, we can't do that. He said, as much as our, as much as my Jews love this campaign and we want to run with it, we can't do that. You know, and I said, I said, well, I said like, you're making a good point. I like said, but I said, Joe, I like creative images. I think it's a great idea to do the American flag on fire with them in the front. But I agree with you about that. We don't want people not to go see the movie. We don't want people to make it, as you know, when you do these, these one sheet campaigns, they're so critical at the end of the day. And if people don't like it, we don't want people to not go see the movie stuff, but that got changed. But Warner Brothers really loved it. To this day, it's one of, it was one of his one of their favorite campaigns. Um, Flockers, um, I did, and this one, me and Spike worked together. And um, let me tell you, this happened. Um, uh, we all talked about, uh, Spike said, why don't you do a Russian constructivism effect? That's an effect that was done in Russia when they were doing political movements. And uh, we, start, we, start, we tried that direction, that style. And what happened is, then we changed, and Spike said, um, I don't know, man, I'm not sure if that's working. You know, I like Sal Bass. And I said, well, let me wait. I said, wait, Spike, now, I can do something that's kind of a, a memoir to Sal Bass, but if you call Sal Bass up, he's going to charge us like over $100,000, $200,000, maybe to just do the drawing. So I said, I can do drawing, but you gotta tell one, you gotta tell Universal Pictures that if you use Sal Bass and look like that, you're gonna have to do the rights to pay him off. I don't have those rights. No, no, we'll do it, man. Universal's gonna pay for it. You just do the idea and we like it. We'll take care of it. Okay, fine. So, Anadio and Murder. I never saw Anadio and Murder, so just to be honest, when I did this, I, I came up with a, a, a hip hop rapper and we put the gunshots on it and it had. A, a graphic feel, which I like. I, I like very strong graphic images, and so that's how I like came up with this style, this style here. And then this particular font was a kind of like a type. Uh, the, 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 the font was kind of like a typewriter font, but kind of slightly distressed. So anyway, when I did it, um, it's funny, you know. Um, I did it, and I said, "Now you got to the Universal Marketing Department. You're going to have to get this clearance for Sal Bass." As soon as the movie comes out, for the producer, uh, Preston Home called me and said, all right, did you see the Hollywood Reporter, the, the great writer there? I said, no. He said, your name's on the front. So I look at the Hollywood Reporter and I said, and I see Art Steals, <laughs> Art Steals uh, clockers from Spanish stuff. Wow. And I said, oh my god. And so it was so funny because a lot of times when, when studios and marketing people call me back, like I got a call from Entertainment Weekly, and they called me up and said, you know, Sal Bass just called us and said, you did like an artwork that mimicked his work. I said, no, I was borrowing the style, but I was never ripping him off. I'm going to be clear about that. I love it. These incredible movies he's done. I was just kind of giving hom I said homage. But nowadays, it was like, you know, you're stealing. And so what happened is Sal Bass went and told people, I don't like it. It's not good. And, um, I, you know, so at the end of the day, we, we we slightly changed it. But after that, Sal Bass passed, died two weeks after. Wow. And then some people came back to me and said, man, your art were killed. Man, I'm so upset. I'm so upset. But you did that it put a man in a physical, negative approach, and the man died. And I'm like, so no, don't, don't say, don't say. Don't, don't, I didn't kill him. You know, I, 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 I did work, and the work was beautiful, but I'm sorry, you know, it didn't make him happy, so we didn't have to move forward. So. <laughs> it was funny. Uh, he got a game, 
Um, you know, it's a story about Denzel plays a, a, a father. He's having issues with his son, with uh, uh, Ray Allen, Jesus Seller. And um, this was an idea, like I said before, we had you know, a lot of different drawings and sketches. He come up with this night, and, I, and I, there was, a, uh, there was a, uh, uh, his dad had a prayerful part about his life. So a uh, great photographer that I brought in uh, to do this, uh, he, he came up, we shot all these different images in this Ray Allen. And uh, uh, we ended up you know, doing this beautiful, like you can see here, there's a beautiful image. We have some great images. I had an image of him with, with Jesus up with a white cloth over his head. Beautiful shot of, of them together and everything. It was beautiful oh, right. Sometimes when I'm working on a campaign, you have so many great ideas that you show. And you say, uh, I show like uh, 20 or 30 to the studio. Sometimes I don't think it's a bad idea to show a, a studio too many ideas mm -hmm. in the campaign because they got 20 to pick from. So now, they, now they got, now they got to edit down from 20 down to to one. So they got to pick five. So I think the best bet sometimes is maybe give them like five ideas. You know, make it keep a smaller process of change. And so that's what happened with this one. So uh, I was I'm really happy with this campaign. I've been wanting to hear for this. Uh, my last one, uh, one of my favorites is Bamboozle. Uh, and uh, the reason why I like Bamboozle so much, when I, as before, I read the script and I read, I saw what this story was about. It was about uh, products that were being, African Americans were being sold uh, on these products and part of their history. And it's so funny, when we, when we did the, uh, when we did Bamboozle, uh, uh, Tommy Davidson, <laughs> I talked to him, we gotta do a shot of you, man, for the one sheet, but you gotta do like a pick and any look. So I bought D Stevens in and D shot it, and, and he said, no problem, so we put him in this outfit. And man, this guy was doing huffing and shuffling, marrying. I mean, it was just like, oh, it was like that, that old classic movie, Birth of a Nation. I mean, I was like, oh my God, man, you can do it. We didn't even, I didn't have to even art direct. Tom, he was so funny. <laughs> um, he was just what he was doing. So anyway, we put him and Savion and Glover together. And Spike, with this concept, Spike told me, he said, Art, I want the image of this campaign to be a combination of Barnum and Bailey surgery and the Piccadilly style. So that part of it, the look of it has this kind of a, a role. This is similar to kind of what Barnum and Bailey would have done. And then we added in the um, the cotton field. The other one I don't have here, uh, we had like a watermelon and a whole bunch of other things. And uh, we tried to make it as offensive as possible. That was like, oh, and it was very offensive. I told Spike, I said, I told Spike, I said, man, uh, I, the only thing I can do more controversial than this is to have Buck me walking, going down the street with the, with the president. I mean, I can't, I can't, I don't know how much more offensive I can make it. I mean, it was pretty offensive. Yeah. And so I even got, I got letters from uh, Brill's content came to me, uh, a, a Wall Street Journal, all, all over the place. I mean, Spike said, all right, you're, gonna, you're getting emails all over the place. Can you answer the questions? I said, yeah, I can do it. And I told them, I said, what, and, and actually we had one radical movement in Los Angeles, one, one producer company that works with Nation of Islam, they told me, oh, it's unfair what New Line Cinema's doing, and they're showing uh, racial slurs, and they're this, and it's a Caucasian company, and they're marketing us wrong, and it's unfair. I said, I, 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 I got to be, I told the gentleman back, and I, I, I told him, I said, I got to be honest with you. You know, I, I, I'm African American, not, I'm an African American agency. And uh, the reason why we did this is because I don't know if you really understood what the movie's about. The movie's about what happened in history and, and how it was used to market these products to people using African American images from the past. As you know, Buckwheat and Aunt Jemima, those are all products that were images that were used to sell those products. And that's why it was done like that. And I don't want to offend you, but we did it to sell the movie. And unfortunately, it is offensive. It is going to get under your skin, but that was the purpose of you coming to see the movie. My job is to help people to come see the film. That's the purpose of the key art, is to get you so moved, moved, so shocked and so brought into it that you can come to the film. God gave me a blessed image. I don't know, some people come to me, to be quite honest, I did all these campaigns, 
Some people said to me, you have a style. And I didn't really know I had a style. I, I was more trying to show an image than I was trying to, I'm doing a body of work with a 